Right, the first idea we're going to look at on this video is about mutual exclusion. So mutual meaning together and exclusion meaning they um, stop each other from happening. So together these things can't happen. So what we're talking about is a situation where we have event A and event B and there's no overlap. Or if they did overlap on the diagram, there would be a zero in that overlap. So they can't happen together. So if we do this in probability notations, it would be the intersection or the probability of the intersection of A and B is equal to zero. We would also know that if we wanted to work out the probability of A or B in this situation, it would simply be the probability of A plus the probability of B because there is no overlap. Whereas previously, if we had to do an overlap, if we added the two together, we would have to also subtract the intersection because that overlap had got double counted. But where it's uh, where we have mutual exclusion, um, then those the A and B would just simply add up to being A or B, and that's one where we, we that's something we can use to test whether something is mutually exclusive or not. And a term that goes hand in hand with mutual exclusion is whether events are complementary. So this happens when two events, um, if their probabilities add up to one, and we um, think about it as like A dash being the complement of A. Or we often think about that as being A not happening, and complementary events are mutually exclusive. You can't be both in A and not in A, although Schrodinger and his cat might disagree with you, but that's a topic for another day. The next thing this, this naturally leads on to is um, to talk about um, conditional probability. And what we're thinking about there is whether we have um, one event affecting another, and so it's things like, um, what's the likelihood of somebody being late for school if it's raining or not? So if it's raining, it might affect their journey to school. There might be more traffic. They might be more likely um, to be late for school. Those sorts of things. That would be conditional probability, where the probabilities of the subsequent event could be affected by the first one. Now, the notation that gets used for this is a straight down line. So you read this as the probability of A given that B has happened. Now I'll use an example to demonstrate this. So I've got this Venn diagram here of um, a group of 500 year 13 students. Some of them passed stats, some of them are going to Auckland Uni, some are doing both, and some are doing none of those things. And the question I'm going to ask is what's the probability that they're going to Auckland University if they passed stats? So this is the probability of going to Auckland Uni given that they passed stats. So the condition being applied is that we are only looking at the students that passed stats. So only considering this 175 students there, of those ones, how many are going to Auckland Uni? So then we have it's the 100 out of those ones. So we are getting a probability of 100 out of 175. And it's really important you get these the right way around. If we'd done this the other way, if I'd done the probability that they passed stats given that they're going to Auckland Uni, then the domain we're looking at now is the going to Auckland Uni circle. So that's a total of 300. And then we want of them the ones that had passed stats. So this is the probability of passing stats given that they've gone to Auckland Uni. So this would be 100 out of the possible 300 that are going to Auckland Uni. Now there is actually a formula that applies to this and it is that if we've got events A and B the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. So uh, the intersection meaning the place where A and B both happen and divided by our restricted domain of only looking at that condition of B. And if you take a look at the examples we did above intuitively, that's exactly what we did. So the 100 was where both of them happen, and then on the, the second one, the 300 was restricting it down to the condition of that probability, um, that, that group that we wanted so of only going to Auckland Uni, so we only did it as the... Um, the 300 there. So had we put that into actual probability notation, it would have been um, 100 out of the 500 uh, that we had in total of, of year 13 students divided by 
uh, the 300 out of 500, um, which ends up being 100 over 300 and gives us what we had just there. For most questions, I would go about trying to set it up as a diagram and think about it intuitively like we did to begin with. But this formula does get given to you on your formula sheet. So if you're happy using that, go ahead with that. So I'll do another example. I'll set this up as a table so you can see how to do it that way as well. All right, so Mr. Hall decides to look into the year 13s that have uh, bought tickets for the ball and that haven't, and how many credits they've got in terms of whether they've got level 3 or not. And we've got that summarized in this table. So the first question I'm going to ask is, what's the probability that a student is going to the ball given that they have level 3? So I'm going to do this intuitively um, by looking at the students that have level 3. So we're restricting it only to look at this group of students here. And we've got a total of 275. So this will be out of 275. Now of them, how many are going to the ball? And we've got this 250 here. So it'll be 250 out of 275. Now I'm going to ask another question that looks very similar, but is actually different. And this is the importance of getting these the right way around. So what's the probability that a student going to the ball already has level three? So in this case, we're looking for our larger group being restricted down to only the ones going to the ball. So we've got this bit here going to the ball. If they're going to the ball, what's the chance they already have level three? So that's 250 out of 400. Now, if you're going to use the formulas on each of them, um, we'll do, let's call this one A. So if I was going to do the formula for A, so the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. So the probability of A and B means um, student is going to the ball and they have level 3. So that is 250 out of our total of 500 and divide it by the probability of B, which was um, the given that they have level 3. So the chance of having level 3 is 275 out of 500, which comes to the same number we just saw there. I'm just showing you how to use it as a formula instead. If we call this one part B, I'll do the same with this one for people that prefer to use the formula. So in this case, we've got the probability of A and B uh, so the probability of the student going to the ball and has level 3, um, so ball and level 3 is 250 out of 500, uh, and divide it by our group that we want it out of. Um, so it's the probability of the student going to the ball already has, so it's only the students going to the ball. So students going to the ball is 400 out of 500, and that comes to 0.625. However you want to do this, whether it's using the formula or going for a bit more of an intuitive approach, that's totally fine.